Hey there guys, Reckoning here, welcome back to Let's Play Kadawa Shoujo. In the last part, we took care of Act 1. We're already in Act 2 of Lily's Ark. Yeah! And of course we saw canned motherfucking coffee. And a little sneak peek of Hassau getting it in. I'm not going to explain what that means, but let's, let, let's get into the actual story. That, that, that's why you're here, right? Not just, just to hear me drone on about things that don't make any sense. Or that just don't matter. Right, to the story. I wake to the annoying din of my alarm clock. It's bright red in my face. We getting more lag? There we go. I'm going to assume that that's the next line. Is it? It's not good. Tell me, is it? What the fuck did I just do? Hello? Okay, that, well, that was weird. So yeah, I figured out the um, way you'll back up. It's just the mouse wheel. Okay, oh good, it was the next line. I didn't have to waste that out of time. It's the same alarm clock I had at home, one of the few remaining artifacts from my days before coming to Yumako. I'd hope that using it would help ease my tr transition into this new life. No such luck, though. Groggily dragging myself out of bed, I wipe the sleep out of my eyes, then reach over to my desk. I open a couple of the bottles of the medication strewn across it, and swallow a few pills dry. By now, the process is starting to become automatic, something I should be glad for, given their purpose. Feeling much more than awake... Yeah, feeling much more awake, feeling much more awake than before I wander into the bathroom. While the shower warms up, my mind begins to wander as my new daily routine begins once again. Bright colors of the fireworks fill my mind, as do the two girls whom I spent the, my time watching them. Yeah, as do the two girls with whom I spent my time watching. Right. Feels strange to be moved so much by people I know so little about. Then again, I suppose these aren't normal circumstances. At least I have someone to talk to now, aside from my schoolmate next door. With the time left before school begins today waning, I begin to get ready for class. Walking through the door into the classroom, I notice that I'm still somewhat early. I see about five or six students milling around, most of them looking as if they'd rather be rather still be in bed. It's at times like this that I appreciate being a morning person. That said, two students in particular seem just as perky as always. Hi Shizune. Hi Misha. I suddenly realized that my greeting would be lost on the former, so I quickly followed up with a wave. She doesn't seem overly bothered. Or interested, for that matter. Hello Hee-chan. Are you feeling well? I can only assume her greeting comes from Shizune. It's hard to tell if she's speaking as herself or Shizune sometimes. Better than most everyone else, I guess. You team seem, br seem bright and chipper. Misha signs this back, as to Sh back to Shizune as I say it, eliciting a somewhat t terse answer if her sharp and rapid arm movements are any indication. Considering these two made such a big deal out of the festival preparations, I probably, sh probably should have chosen my words more carefully. Since you're a new student, we'd be cutting you some slack. Please don't expect this kind of task dodging to be allowed in the future. Misha looks as if she's about to add her own comment, but quickly goes back to interpreting as Shizuna continues unabated. Are your contrib contribution to Class 3-2 stall is unappreciated? They had a stall? Oh, 3-2, right. I'm stupid. Yeah, while your contribution to 3-2 stall is appreciated... Our word sure got around quickly. That or these two have their fingers on the pulse of the school. We would prefer your efforts to be focused on the task at hand, namely, your own class. As much as I hate to admit it, they do have a point. Before I can respond, though, Shizune adds something more, which draws a smile from Misha. Did you enjoy the festival, then? Lecture over, I guess. Yeah, it was good. Did you do enjoy it? Shizune gives a short nod as Misha grins and bounces her head up and down. The contrast side by side is amusing. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice more students starting to trickle into the classroom. A quick glance on my watch confirms that they're a few minutes late. I look over to Hanako's seat and realize that she's already there and contently reading a book. It makes me wonder just how long she's been there without me noticing. With heavy footsteps coming up the hallway signaling Muto's arrival, our idle talking comes to an end and I take my seat next to Misha. As the door slides open, he strides through with a ponderous gait. His posture is even worse than usual and his eyes are barely staying open. I guess my quip to Lily and Hanako about the staff was misplaced. Everyone opens their books as he reaches the desk, and the first class of the new week begins. 
I rub my eyes as the lunch bell rings out. Shut up, Bell! Glad for the temporary repeat reprieve from work. I'm entirely unsurprised when I look over to the door and see Lily standing there, cane in hand, patiently waiting for Hanako. Considering her acceptance of my request to join them yesterday, I decided to spend my lunchtime with them rather than eat alone. Hanako moves surprisingly fast to meet her companion, and the two enter the hallway before I can catch up. Lily's head turns slightly, registering the sound of footsteps behind her. As Hanako notices and follows her lead, she almost jumps in surprise. Hisao? I mean, um, hello, Hisao. Hi, sorry if I startled you. Lily turns to greet me, helped in her orientation by Hanako. Good afternoon, Hisao. Are you joining us? If it's no trouble, there's not much to do, really. Not much else to do. Could not say that right, could I? <sighs> Lily gives a small nod, as if to silently brush away any idea that would be troubling in the least. We descend one set of, stair set of stairs and walk down the hallway to the usual room, our pace somewhat quicker, quicker than usual thanks to Lily using Hanako for direction rather than her cane in the railings. As expected, it's deserted. The sounds of the other clubs can only be barely heard as sunlight streams into the room from outside. Looking around the room, I notice a couple of empty easels propped up against the wall that I don't think were there before. The art club much, must use this room as extra storage. Should I get the chest set out? Hanako's voice seems less tense when she's directly addressing Lily. Yes, I'll make tea while you sort the pieces. Uh, I can do that for you if you like. She ponders the offer for a moment before smiling, confirming that I've made the right choice. Her face is remarkably easy to read. Very well, thank you. She slides a retracted cane into the handle of the bag and sets it, sets it against one of the table legs before taking a seat opposite Hanako. As I prepare tea with the three of us, I can hear the small wooden pieces being set on the board. I wonder how good Lily is at chess, given her circumstances. Well, she can hear pretty well, so she might be able to hear what goes where. Then again, how would, she, how would she know what pieces they are? I have no idea. By the time I place the steaming tea cups onto the table, Lily and Hanako have already moved their first pieces as they nibble on sandwiches and rice balls from their respective bags. Oh. I note that the chessboard they're using has holes in the middle of each square and pegs on the bottom of the pieces, and each dark square is slightly raised. Watching Lily's fingers skating over the board tracing out the positions of the pieces makes me marvel a little at the simple ingenuity of the design. It must be specifically made for blind players. So you can play chess blind. It's a little tougher, obviously, but whatever. Here you go. Hanako gives a small nod as I put down put the cup down next to her to put, as I put the cup next to her on the I even even slowly I read it wrong. Hanako gives a small nod as I put down the cup next to her side of the board. Lily's hand ventures sideways slightly, so I gently place the cup touching the tips of her fingers, a gesture she seems to appreciate. Yeah, nailed it! I finally take a seat and silently slip sip my tea as the two play. The contrast in their appearances while playing is interesting to watch. I cannot talk. Did you guys know that? Hanako looks closely at the board, her face one of focused concentration. Lily, on the other hand, keeps her head level and maintains her calm neutrality. Lily's gentle voice addresses both of us as she continues to play. How was class now that the festival is over? I look to Hanako to see whether she'll answer first, but seeing that she's doing we'll see that she's doing the same. Not great. Half this class seemed to be dozing off, even including the teacher. Not to mention a test on top of all that. Hanako quietly adds her own agreement with this. I can imagine it being a bit tough being a bit difficult for you being a transfer student. Well, I think I did fine. Other than the shock of a test coming so early, science is probably my best subject. How'd you do, Hanako? Me? Uh, okay, I guess. Hanako's too sincere to be able to pull off lying very well. That much is obvious. 
Lily's smile slips very slightly. From her reaction, Hanako mustn't be skilled enough at academics to do very well without preparation. How'd your class handle it, Lily? It went surprisingly well, actually. Only one student was absent, which was better than the teacher. what the teacher expected. I just wonder who wasn't there. <laughs> do you guys know who it was? I have no idea. Something having to do with a manly picnic, though. With the topic all but run dry, again, there's that phrase, the two concentrated on the chess game once again. I can't say I've ever liked the idea of chess as a spectator sport, but given its unique nature, for once I'm wrapped in watching the game unfold. As time wears on, both of them demonstrate decent skill at playing the game. Having captured two more pawns than Hanako, Lily has the upper hand, but only slightly. Until Hanako makes a strange move with the queen, seizing upon this lapse in judgment, Lily takes the place with the knight. Without hesitation, Hanako moves a pawn to take Lily's rook on the opposite side of the board and promotes it to queen. Lily's face falters as she fingers over the, as her fingers move over the pieces and she realizes that she just put that she just fell to Hanako's strap. It's a little distracting to have the board traced out after each move, even if it's out of necessity. Judging by Hanako's lack of reaction, she must be used to this. She and Lily must have played at least a few games of chess against each other after all. Check. That's not bad at all. Nice, Hanako. The compliment causes her to flower into a surprised blush. Thank you, I didn't think it would work. I look over to Lily, her fingers having just traced out the position of her remaining pieces in an attempt to extricate her king from this bind. I think this is a checkmate. Hmm? I take another look at the board to confirm. Sure enough, her king has nowhere to escape without being threatened by another piece. My only question as to which of them is the better at this has just been answered. So it is. Lily gives a small sigh as Hanukkah smiles. From the reactions, this seems like a fairly usual result. How long have you been, two been playing? Since I was young. Lily nods at Hanukkah's brief answer. Hanukkah taught me to play soon after I met her. I can beat her every now and then, but that's a rarity. I don't seem to have the right mindset for it. If Lily came to the Yamako at the start of high school and met Hanako when she moved to the dorms, that means she'd only been playing for about one year. After seeing Hanako's level of play, I'm not too surprised Lily has trouble beating her. But she's better at languages than I am, so... Lily gives an appreciative, if slightly amused... Am amused? Amused, smiled at Hanako's quick reversal of her compliment. Well, that's how it is. Much to everyone's surprise, the bell suddenly rings, heralding an end to the lunch break. Hmm, that game lasted longer than I thought it did. Same, I guess we better get back to class. Hanako's already in the middle of packing up, so I take Lily's bag and offer it to her. To my surprise, she takes it in and nods, then places it back down on the table. This how? May I make a request? Sure, go ahead. Would you mind if I were to quickly feel your face? Oh, uh, no, go ahead, I don't mind. The question takes me severely off guard, but once I regain my composure, it seems sensible enough. So far, Lily's had no idea what I actually look like, and this would be her only way to find out. Lily raises her right hand, which I take in mind to guide to my face before letting go. The room is entirely silent as Lily's hand moves over and around my features, from my chin to my cheeks to everywhere else. Everywhere else? I expected this to feel a lot more disquieting than it does. I suppose that's because this action is entirely a matter of practicality, being functionality, functionally no different to simply looking at someone's face. Her hand is soft, but what takes me by surprise is the length of, her, length of her fingers, not to mention how sure even the slightest of her movements are. I have no doubt that her level of tactile feeling would be far beyond mine. Her hand briefly once runs once through my hair before retreating. I'm sure that every inch of my face has been committed to memory. It's only now, too, that I realize Hanako has been silently watching the entire time. Thank you for letting me do that, Hisao. And if I might add, I think you are quite handsome. I blush a little at her remark before raising a questioning an eyebrow. But if you can't see, how... Just because I can't see, that doesn't mean I don't have my own preferences. Um, we'd better go now. Yeah, that's a good point. I guess we'll see you later then, Lily. <laughs> Walking through the hallway, 
back to our classrooms, I noticed that Hanako seems quieter than before, but also more comfortable. Lily, her hand on Hanako's shoulder, seems to pick up on her assured pace as well, smiling as they walk. If I could spend the rest of my time in Yamaku like this, I don't think it'd be so bad. All this needed for joy are small exchanges of happiness, after all. As I reach my desk and set my bag aside, I realize something, or rather, my stomach does. I was so busy with those two, I forgot to buy lunch. <laughs> nice, so uh, nice. <laughs> Saturday, my second most favorite day of the week. This is almost entirely due to the fact that it is the day with the second least amount of school, with class ending at the beginning of lunch. I open my door, com open my door confidently, myself being, myself being more confident of being able to get enjoyment out of the fine weather and shorter class length. I confidently stride down the hallway and down the stairs to the lobby of the male dorms. I confidently look behind me to see whose foot footsteps are approaching. I, I lose my confidence in this day being enjoyable. Hey man, what's up? Not much, I guess, just looking forward to the afternoon. You? Your absent arm around my slump shoulders work too comfortably. Something's up. Let's step outside, shall we? Let's just not go to the roof, okay? I was just about to before you stopped me. He doesn't take my reaction to his theatrics well. Ignoring him, I walk outside and start down the steps. It doesn't take too long for him to catch up with me again. I wonder if he wants money or to rant about another conspiracy. Maybe both. I got a bone to pick with you. Uh-huh. It's about that blind. You know who I'm talking about. Conspiracy it is. For a moment, I contemplate feigning ignorance, but realize this will go quicker if I just let him get it all out. Lily, the one from your class. You're in first name terms with her? He looks positively shocked at this development. Did he not expect me to be able to answer? He gathers himself and coughs into his fist, dramatically like everything he does. Well, never mind that. I'm here to warn you, you know, man to man. Warn me about what, Lily? Yeah, you don't know her, man mostly true. I've only known her and Hanukkah for less than two weeks, and even then we've just been exchanging banal banter about school or a while away lunch. I'm pretty sure you don't either. That's not the point. You're the one spending inordinate amounts of time with her. It distresses me that someone like Kenji, who's probably as far out of the loop as one could possibly get, knows such about such a trivial fact as who likes she's of a friend. And then again, I am a transfer student, and she's not only the representative of their class, but also a tall blonde. Maybe I should appreciate this ranting as a warning that the rumor mill exists in the school, and that I'm firmly within it. It's just lunch, nothing special. Look, man, under this, the bridge. See this bridge? You're under it. A man's gotta do what a man's gotta do to get intel. I just wanna make sure you don't f end up too far under the bridge. You're losing me, Kenji. That's okay, lots of people get lost. That's why I'm here to help. Just be careful around her, okay? She looks harmless on the outside, but I've heard shit. Bad shit. You know the student council, right? He seems to involuntarily, involuntarily shudder as he says the words. Putting him and Shizune together in a room is a, an amusing mental exercise. I wonder if they've met. Yeah, the metal thing. Or something like that. Yeah, Shizune and Misha are in my class. I seem to have dodged the draft, though. Good man, good man. This blonde? She was there. In the student council. Right. Damn. There. I see. And? And she's not there now. Seriously, think about it. Something must have gone down. I've stopped walking for a moment, giving the idea more thought than I probably should. It would explain the fight the two had, at least in part. Wait, no, not really. Even leaving the student council would be a catalyst. In the end, it doesn't explain much at all, other than the fact that their feud goes back some ways. I guess you have a point. I'm not seeing how that really affects me, though. Okay, now field this one. Lily's foreign, obviously. Obviously. Now, what nationality is she? I open my mouth to give the answer, but realize that I have none. In fact, I've given the matter very little thought. Given that she has no accent and acts perfectly Japanese, I suppose it never seemed important. None of the dimensions it, though. I am rather curious. To be honest, I don't know. Maybe English? They like tea? That's so stereotypical. I probably shouldn't resort to stereotypes. That, that, there you go. That's the only lead I have. You're not thinking. Luckily, you have me here to think for you. Gee, thanks. 
He brushes off the quip, quip effortlessly. Now answer me this. Who has lots of social power, is filthy, stinking rich? You know blondes are alright, right? Has a long history of disputes and used to belong to a much larger organization. The Roman Catholic Church? Well, okay, there's that. There's also the Mafia. Come on, rich, foreign, there's no way she doesn't have connections to them. She comes from a business-like family, related to Shizune's business-like family. That's why she has money. I have to, I have reason to doubt the logic of his deductions, but he so, so, shows no signs of stopping. So, do you think you know where... So, do you know where I think she's from? Italy? Mainland Italy is a small time, dude. She has to be from Sicily. All those mafioso types come from there. Wait, no, Russia. Damn, this could be bad. Mafia, they're a serious businessman. FKGB everywhere. Param paramilitaries. Hardcore smuggling and... Wait, wait, stop. Just slow down a sec. What point are you trying to get at here? You don't know what you do, man. I won't get in your way. Agents don't operate like that. But I just want you to be careful. When the time comes, we'll need all the help we can get. I don't want to lose you, comrade. Well, at least he's concerned for me. Kinda. I wave goodbye to him as we separate out to our respective classes, but I'm not sure that he sees the gesture. Piling my books into my bag, I catch a glimpse of the library books I'd borrowed last week. Might as well return them, considering they took all of two days to finish. I briefly consider inviting Hanukkah to the library, but she's already gone. It'd probably be better for my study if I'm alone anyway. With a quick stretch and a wave to a couple of classmates who give the same to me, I make my way out of the classroom. As I open my bag and shove the books through the return slot on the front counter, I notice a strange person behind the desk. Old and graying, she must be Yuko's replacement when she's working in the cafe. I begin looking for a free table, a task made somewhat difficult considering that despite there not being many students in here, they're all sitting at their own tables. Noticing a familiar head of hair, I walk over to one near the braille section. It's hard to tell whether Lily's concentrating hard or not, her plastic expression holding perfectly still as her finger slides along the dot-filled pages of her book. Hi, mind if I sit here? Hmm? Oh, no problem at all. She trails off, evidently still focused on her business at hand. Ah, it's Sal. She gives a nod of greeting as I sit opposite her at the table, plug a chemistry textbook out of my back, and quickly thump to the chapter we're covering in class. For a while, we sit there and read, each in our own way. Seeing her reminds me of what Kenji said this morning, though. That and the fact that I've never seen s someone read in Braille before that makes me... That and the fact that I've never seen someone read in Braille before makes me keep throwing glances at her. I kind of feel guilty about it, given that she has no way to realize I'm doing so. So I decided to just ask her about it. Her lineage isn't exactly a state secret, after all, and there's another thing I've only, only just noticed from, from her movements. Hey, Lily, mind if I ask a question? Not at all. Is anything wrong? I was just wondering, you're at least part foreign, right? She gives a small giggle before sitting down her, setting down her book. I've always been amused at how squeamish, pe squeamish people are about that. Akira's mentioned how much she and I look alike from m most of us before. The details are a bit complicated, but I'm half Japanese, half Scottish. Scottish? That was not exactly my first guess. It takes some uh, effort to not blurt it out loud. I try to conjure Im images of the place in my mind. I think as far as the UK goes, Scotland isn't bad to live in, but I'm not really sure. My first guess of England was surprisingly close, at least ge geographically. That does leave another question, though. But you have no accident? That's where the details begin. I was born and raised in Japan, despite my mother being foreign. Ah, I get it. Hold on. If she moved to the dorm simply due to Akira working longer hours, so they don't live near the school? She gives a small size if she didn't expect me to go any deeper. Was her previous frankness just a front? Not exactly. It's been a long time since we actually met. I feel like I'm not getting the whole story, but I don't really want to go unduly prying into her situation. Her about face shows she feels kind of awkward about it. So, do you speak much English? To be honest, I don't know that much about Scotland, but at least I know that's the main language there. It takes her a moment to recollect, or recollect, just collect herself, appreciating the change in topic. That's right. My family mostly used Japanese around the house when I was young, but they made sure Akira and I knew our Scottish side just as well. I'm fluent in the language, but I'm also studying it in school, to keep my skills up and have the qualifications on paper, mainly. So you're bilingual? That's pretty impressive. I wouldn't go that far. Having parents who can speak the language is a large advantage, and English books in Braille aren't too hard to buy or import, with Yuko's help at least. 
There's a relatively high demand for local English teachers here anyway, which also gives me some motivation to learn it here. Or, well, demand for English teachers? For a moment, I wonder why she brought this up. You're planning to be an English teacher? She gives an enthusiastic nod. It must be nice having such a definite future in mind. I've never really given much thought to mine, so I'm kind of envious. Hmm. What's wrong? It's just, I could see you as a teacher pretty easily. It suits you. For a moment, she's speechless. She lowers her face and lets out a nervous giggle, something I've never seen her do before. With Lily's role as class representative and her, her dependable nature, teaching does seem to be a lot of work fitting her personality. Sorry, that's probably a little much. It is true, though. Waving her hand in front of her face dismissively, she quickly recovers. It's not that, it's just only one person's ever said that to me before. A short, somewhat awkward silence follows the discussion. Without knowing it, I end up staring into a troublesome topic again. I should try to cheer up a little. It was me who went and got her brooding, after all. Wanna go grab lunch at the cafeteria after this? I might perk her up a bit, or at least take her mind off her apparently complicated family situation. Going by her smile, it seems to have the intended effect. I appreciate the thought, but the food there... Quite a quick redirection of the conversation. She does have a point, though. The food there isn't the greatest. Maybe the Shanghai? We could ask Hanako if she wants to come as well. Ah, what is it? Almost forgotten until you reminded me. Hanako's birthday's coming up soon, and I was going to go shopping in the city for a present tomorrow. If that's an invitation, I'd be happy to accompany you. The ability to get more used to the layout of the city would probably be a good thing. I barely set foot in there, so I'd be hopelessly lost by myself. She gives a nod, signaling that she happily approves of this plan for Sunday. We eventually get back to her books, though before I begin reading again, I steal one last glance at her. Maybe I've been thinking on my situation too much. After all, everyone here would have their own unique circumstances. The chance to get outside and clear my head could probably do me good. How'd I put that thing? Bored of instead. Bored of standing in place and watching the television in a shop window, I pull myself away from the tacky display with a little effort. After living at Yamaku, the city seems like an entirely different world. No running in the halls, calm and orderly conduct is to be used at all times in the classroom, students are to exit rooms after checking both directions for oncomers. Elevators are reserved for movement of paired students, single file on stairs. Compared to such strict, almost regimental standards, it's a shitty sit. The shitties shopping arcade might as well be a strange country. Ah, what am I, a stereotypical Asian male? Hello, welcome to Shitty Walk. Oh, I'll stop that now. Where the hell did I put the... Ah, forget it. While the school may have its fair share of hustle and bustle during the festival, the outside world is much different. It's strange. Having lived in a metropolitan area, metropolitan city before my accident, this should feel more natural than Yamaku in the surrounding town if it could. Yet it feels foreign somehow. The elevated walkways and tall buildings, each adorned with billboards taller than any three people, don't do anything to distract me from the passing crowd's reactions. Lily keeps one hand on my shoulder, the other holding a cane which taps the ground like a, with a metronome-like steadiness. Looking over to her, the neutral smile of her still holds. Having only seen her in her school uniform, I'd not have recognized her as she sat on a bench waiting for me to come, if not for her cane propped up against it and her distinctive hair. I can't tell whether the glancing at her due to her height, her foreign looks, her obvious blindness, or all three. Not that any of those would make the situation any less comfortable than it is. Do you have any ideas if I were to look first to sell? Her voice breaks me out of my line of thought. I can't imagine that she's failing to notice the attention she garners, but she seems unfazed by it. I get the feeling she's the type to enjoy walking outside, so she might get used to it, be used to it by now. Not really. This is my first time in the city, so I've got no idea where to go. She furrows her brow in thought, planning a route for us to take, and come to think of it, a way to communicate it. Something I've noticed in the time I've been with her is how, when deep in thought, she lacks close to any form of body language to show it. Her expression may change, but not a hint, not a hint of movement shows. She seems to have little in the way of sweeping physical gestures in general, though, so I've assumed it's part of her reserved nature. Is there a large electronics store near here? I take a quick look around, mostly finding clothing stores. After a few seconds, I notice a store with a bright blue sign some distance away that fits the description. Yup, it's just a bit ahead of us. Should we go in that direction? Thankfully, it's just the information she needed. With a nod, we start off and head toward Lily's unknown destination, Landmarks being our guide.
Here you go. One vanilla, one chocolate. I hand the money over to the counter and take the cones to the railing that Lily's sitting on. I can't believe a letter tricked me like this. She not only led me to an ice cream stall, but also got me to buy her some. At least she gave the money for hers. Sure enough, she's patiently waiting where I left her. I guess she was planning on making the day an event, rather than a simple shopping trip. I call out to her and slowly place the vanilla cone in her outstretched hands, being careful to make sure she has a good hold of it before letting go. At least her tastes are fairly normal. I was worried she would ask for some weird flavor when she first asked. Here's the change. It's okay. Keep it. I moved to protest, but realized the futility of doing so over such a small amount. I slipped the coin in my pocket, supplementing my meager allowance ever so slightly. Lily shows no signs of wanting to get up, so I take a seat beside her and start eating my own ice cream. Summer's we summer weather is nice. Hopefully it'll hold out for a little while. You too. I'm beginning to think I'm the only person who prefers winter. Lily, I prefer winter. I hate summer. Well, then again, it's like 95 goddamn degrees around here! The afternoons around here are like 95 goddamn degrees. I hate it! Let's bump my chair. I contemplated her statement, statement for a long moment. Yeah, I think you might be. Uh, well, then again, Hisao doesn't know I'm here. It draws the intended reaction. She's cute when she's spouting. Still, I can't really imagine what's so good about winter. You can't go out without bundling up, and you still freeze anyway. Well, I kind of see what he's getting at. Like, where I live, we don't have winter. We just have, oh, it's a little bit colder. Or, it's not, well, not really it's a little bit colder. It's just, oh, it's not as hot today. Good. <sighs> it's a little bit like I live on the sun or something. Well, then I'd be bursting into flames. <laughs> that That wouldn't be good. <laughs> I used to live further north, where there'd be plenty of snow to play in, so it's a little nostalgic. I don't like the heat very much either. Yeah, neither do I. And I, I've lived in this state my entire life, and I don't like the heat. That does not work. I don't even remember what snow looks like. Well, that was probably because I ran into that bench when I was three years old. <laughs> where I'm right in the fence. What does snow look like? Alright, I'm in the middle of this. At least you can wear a skirt, so don't complain about that. She gives an amused giggle as we both get back to finishing off our already melting cones. I idly sit and watch the crowds going by as we eat, catching bits and pieces of conversation. Looking to Lily, I see her dutifully licking her ice cream, ice cream from the top downward, blissfully unaware of the fact that it's beginning to melt. It's melting. Where? Um, down a bit? <laughs> okay. Did we have jokes about this? I don't remember if we did. She lowers her mouth from the top of the cone. Wait, I got a, I got a good idea. She lowers her mouth from the top of the cone, but has no idea of exactly where the ice cream's dripping. What follows is a game of guiding her left and right until she finally finds it. Danny Onlooker must seem absolutely bizarre. A girl with her eyes closed, turning her cone over and over as the guy next to her gives directions. Instructions, if that works, anyway. A strange variant of childhood blind roll games, maybe. Th I thought that scene was a lot more suggestive before. Damn it, I was wrong. In good time, we, ac we finally finish our treats, and while, the and while away the time conversing casually. Caught mid-sentence, Lily perks her head in her trademark manner. It's an unmistakable sign that something's caught our attention. Ah. What is it? There's a Kira somewhere over there. I think I heard her. I raise an eyebrow as I look in the direction she's facing, somewhat doubtful of her, doubtful of her ability to kick out. Kick out? Pick out Kira's lone voice in the den. Sure enough, though, a blonde girl in a suit can be seen through the tiny gaps between people walking every which way. I raise a hand and wave, trying to catch her attention. Sato! Hey, Sato! She stops in her tracks and looks toward me, evidently noticing my calls. As she does, I notice someone walking beside her. I can't get a look, good look at whoever it is, though, before the two begin walking toward where we are. As they reach us, Lily and I stand and dust ourselves off. What was dusting themselves off? What is the deal with this? Akira? Hey, you two. 
Oh great, a Sadeki. She nods toward me, a gesture which I quickly return. My gaze shifts toward the young girl next to her. <laughs> and our eyes meet. As they do, Akira plops a hand onto her head, a move which doesn't seem to phase her. I don't believe we've met. I'm Hideki. Pleased to meet you, Asal. Guy's name, huh? Guess I just dodged a bullet there. He bows, somewhat restrained by Akira's handing on his head. Oh, Hideki's here too. Are you well? Akira's been taking very good care of me, thank you. Akira grins as if to affirm the point and rubs his head hard, dragging it around in a circular motion. His dreary face during this is somewhat amusing. Uncle's out on business again, so I'm just taking him around for t around town for today. I'd have preferred to be spending the day on a date with my boyfriend, but... Hideki gives a cough to try and redirect Akira's thoughts. As he does so, I find my wandering related. And further, as first cousins? I suppose that explains why she's taking care of him in any case. Come to think of it, Hideki, how do you know my name? Akira told me. Being a Yamaku student, I suppose you're disabled in some way? Not everyone Yamaku's disabled. Which I learned only a handful of days ago. I give silent th thanks to Shizune and Misha for their stream of information about how the school works. Because of them, I found out that since the school will practically accept anybody suffering from non-mental disabilities, it doesn't discriminate against healthy people either. It seems unlikely that many people in good health will enroll there, though. While the standard of education is pretty high, it's extremely isolated and very much focused on helping disabled students. You're dodging the question. Damn, he's sharp. Before I can say another word, though, he decides to take a stab at it himself. If I were to call it myself, your heart? Akira looks mildly curious at me. Her interest peaked at well. That sure was a lucky guess. How did you... You show no missing limbs or deformities, so external disabilities are out. Considering the lack of any strange mannerisms, it's also unlikely that you have any mental disability. But Yamaku doesn't take mentally disabled students. I know. Leaving that aside, the only possibility left is that of internal disabilities. I didn't know which one you might bear, so I guessed correctly as it turns out, and your reaction confirmed my guess. More than a little bemused, I look to Akira. She grins and shrugs, obviously taking some enjoyment out of her partner's deductions. Why did he think it was something wrong with Hasao's tackle or something? I mean, Rin... well... Rin, <laughs> Rin could have had to hit that one right on the head, as you could say. And I mean, the problem could be in his pants, you don't know. <laughs> oh, but there's nothing wrong with Hisao's tackle. We can just ask Kizune and Hanako for that. Whoa, ho, ho! I'm stupid. Maybe I should cut the part off. Leave you guys with the comedic me being the completely stupid. Yeah, that sentence made sense. <sighs> well, before I make myself look any stupider, I'm reckoning, you are the viewer, um, next time we'll do something, I don't know what it's going to be, but probably going to look for Hanako's birthday gift or something, in that, uh, d d d speech, perform it correctly, right, I'm reckoning, you're the viewer, if you like this video, give me a like or favorite. Leave me a comment. That's probably going to end up just saying, Hey, why don't you speak better? <laughs> I made myself laugh with that one. You can leave comments just making fun of how I can't talk. I'm fine with it. But yeah, until next time, stay classy. I'll, I'll, practice my, I'll, I'll practice my talking. I'll practice that. I'll practice my talking. Alright, see you guys then.